My name is Adi Goldstein. I'm Senior Legal Counsel for Governor Raimondo, and I'm here today on behalf of the Executive to testif testify in support of the bills that this committee is considering today. Three weeks ago tomorrow, the shooting in Parkland tore at all of us. Since the governor has taken office, she has ordered the state flag to half-mast nine times because of mass shootings, nine times. We can no longer wait for Washington to act on guns. After Parkland, the governor helped establish the States for Gun Safety Coalition to study gun violence and signed the nation's first executive order to establish a red flag policy. But we need legislation. We need you to act to establish a permanent law with mechanisms to remove firearms from dangerous individuals. The governor greatly appreciates the leadership that the legislature, this body, has shown to take quick action to improve public safety and keep Rhode Islanders safe from gun violence. It is true that Rhode Island has some of the nation's strongest gun laws, and that's part of why we have one of the lowest rates of gun violence. But it's also true that our nation has some of the world's weakest gun laws and it falls on states to keep military-grade weapons out of the hands of civilians. The governor supports the General Assembly's proposal to ban bump stocks and establish a red flag law, similar to laws in Connecticut, Oregon, Indiana, California, and Washington. And the governor supports efforts to ban the purchase of assault weapons and high-capacity magazines as well. Last year, the executive and the General Assembly came together to take guns out of the hands of abusers. It was common sense legislation. And this year, we're poised to take another step forward, thanks in part to strong advocacy from all of our children. Every day since Parkland, our kids and our constituents have asked us what we're doing to address gun violence in the state. I'm testifying here on behalf of the governor to show that we are committed to doing everything that we can to prevent a mass shooting in Rhode Island and to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous individuals. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I urge you to pass these reforms quickly and send them to the governor for her signature. In addition to these, two, these three bills before you, we urge the committee to consider additional measures to enhance the safety of our community and move to ban high capacity magazines, assault weapons, and limit concealed weapons on school property to peace officers, police officers. In addition, there has been a recent proposal to raise the age of possession of all types of firearms to 21, which the governor supports as well. This leg legislation is an important step forward. I recognize, as I believe some of the representatives who've testified in support of the red flag law, that there's gonna be some additional work done and on to improve the bill. And the governor's office is committed to work with the General Assembly to improve these laws and enact them into law as quickly as possible. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know uh, what is to stop uh a spouse from falsely accusing someone of something they didn't do and then the person, the man, say, for example, becoming the victim and having his firearms taken away. What does the governor intend to do about that? Is she doing anything about that? How are you going to prevent that? Certainly. So I believe that the proposed bill, and I'm referring now to 7688, I think there's several pr provisions in the bill right now to provide some protection. Um, I believe that um, Representative Canario has already testified to some of those things, including the fact that it would be a violation of law to um, falsely make false allegations and uh, swear falsely to, in a petition. Um, and so that would expose a person to potential criminal liability. Additionally, um, because there is due process here, if a family member files a petition, um, if it is in the ordinary course of business, that petition will be heard within 21 days prior to any firearms being taken away from anyone, and the individuals would have the opportunity to testify both the petitioner and the respondent, and the court could consider all of the evidence. 
Additionally, I believe that the proposed legislation includes language that requires the petitioner to list all court orders or any type of legal proceedings um, between the parties. And I believe that that language is probably aimed at informing the court as to whether there is a, a type of a contentious relationship like a divorce proceeding or some such thing. So I believe that the proposed legislation does address that. And perhaps there are better ways to do that, to do it. And uh, I'm sure that the House will continue to consider improvements. Okay, so what would they do in a situation where there's never been an accusation at all and just out of the blue, say that there's a, an argument and the woman decides to call the police, make an accusation, and how do they find that to be? I mean, what do they do from there? What's the, what's the process? Well, ma'am, I think that the, legis the proposed legislation does have fairly significant high standards um, before a judge can find reason, can find probable cause, or let me rephrase that. Actually, that's incorrect. I think in order to remove a firearm from any person, a judge would have to find by clear and convincing evidence that all certain factors have been met. And so... Um, I believe that you cannot simply make an accusation. The legislation states specifically that you have to make very specific allegations. In, again, individuals have to testify under oath, and a judge will have to consider a whole host of factors, including prior threats, a pattern of threats, um, a pattern of pre previous violent acts, criminal history, prior protection, orders of protection, mental health history, there's a whole slew of factors that a court would have to consider before finding under, with clear and convincing evidence that the person poses a significant danger or risk of personal injury to another. And that is a pretty high standard. And I think all of that is there in order to guard against a frivolous or untruthful accusation. Okay, so I guess uh, what I don't understand here is if somebody makes an accusation and uh, it seems like this bill, how would they have time to wait for uh, a court to make a decision if they want to go and immediately take the firearm and uh, remove any chance of mm -hmm. harm? Okay, so um, Representative, the way I read the proposed legislation, and again, I'm referring to um, House Bill 7688 right now, I believe that there are two separate processes in place. There is a process for an ex parte order, and that order would apply in cases where there is imminent danger, and under that process, an individual, or frankly, primarily law enforcement, or a, an assistant attorney general could apply to the court ex parte, that means by themselves, um, for an order to remove firearms for a person. If the judge finds that there is probable cause to believe that the person poses an imminent danger of personal injury to themselves or to somebody else, the court could issue a warrant, as it would in many other situations where the court issues warrants to search or to arrest a place. That would allow law enforcement to uh, proceed and go to the location where the respondent lives and search that place and seize uh, firearms. That is one process and that would require a judicial finding by probable cause, which is a constitutionally sound standard prior to seizure of any property. The other method that is outlined in the bill is one where somebody makes a petition to the court and, again, lays forth all of the factors that the court should consider in finding that the person poses a significant risk of danger to another. However, before any property, any firearms are taken, the respondent is provided with notice, they're provided with an opportunity, opportunity for a hearing, and it is only after that hearing, if the court finds by clear and convincing evidence, that the firearms would be removed or have to be surrendered. Okay, that'll be it for now. Thank you. Thank you. 